God is so good. It can't be any other thing than good. He is so good. But you've got to allow him to be good in your life. You've got to allow him. How do you do that? You submit. You've got to submit. You've got to give all. You've got to give it up. The pains, the hurts, the past, the mistakes, the broken promises, the disappointment. You've got to give it to him. Because he is good. And he wants to be good to you. But you've got to allow him to be good to you. You can't hold on to those things and expect God just going to come in and take over. He's not that type of God. He says, I stand at the door and knock. He's just waiting for you to allow him to come in. Invite him in. So that he can move with you and suffer with you. So he can be your friend. So he can help guide you and direct you. Give you wisdom in all things. you got to allow him. got to open up your heart. you got to renew your mind daily. Because he's a good God. He's a good God. Amen? Amen. Amen, church. Thank you. You may be seated. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. I didn't get to say that to you before Christmas, so I get to say it after. <laughs> and guess what? That's for next year, too. Okay? <laughs> Most of you know me. Some of you don't. My name is Scott Dellinger. I'm a friend of uh, Pastor Peggy and Jason Dellinger. And, uh, anyhow, they asked me to come and, and just uh, share with you uh, this week and next week we're out of town enjoying family and friends, and uh, uh, it's okay for pastors to get rest, right? It's yeah. Okay for, uh, go enjoy life a little bit and stuff, and, and uh, you know, and then they just, they call up whoever and say, hey, can you come speak to me? I'm the whoever. But the title of the message this morning is, he is faithful. And, um, you know, this year has been a great year for myself and my family, really we've got to experience his faithfulness uh, basically on a daily basis. Um, just different things, life, uh, family, situations, uh, business, you name it, we've got to experience it. And uh, and he's been faithful. And, and here's the thing about God, he is faithful. It's not, you know, sometimes we, we, we say to this person, oh man, he's a faithful giver, right? Have you ever heard that before? Or they're faithful employee, they show up all the time, right? But see, God's God's not those things. No, He is faithful. If you were look at the word in the dictionary, you would find some statement or whatever about faithful, but really there should be a picture of God because He is faithful. He created the word. He is the word. He is faithful. Okay? And so we're going to talk about that this morning, and, and really what I want to get to is to a place where we are faithful back. We are faithful back. A lot of times, um, you know, God is always faithful no matter what we're going through. We've got to get to a place where we're faithful all the time no matter what we're going through. And a lot of times we're not because our faithfulness is based upon circumstance. Situations, problems, issues, things are good, things are not good. It depends on how faithful we're going to be to our problem. And we've got to get to the place where we're faithful all the time. Why? Because he's faithful all the time. And we're called to be like our next door neighbor. We're called to be like our, our wife or our husband. We're called to be like our pastor. Or are we called to be like him? We're called to be like him. So we've got to get to that place where we're faithful on a daily basis. And here's the thing. I'm going to just let you know a little secret. You're not going to hit the mark every time. You're not going to hit the mark. Just not going to. But here's what I can tell you. That he's faithful. He's faithful. When you don't hit the mark, he's still faithful. He's still faithful when you don't hit the mark. Turn me to Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. Now, this is where I'm taking you, but I'm going to give it to you first, like a bonus. Okay? Revelation 17, verse 14. It says, They will wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will triumph over them because. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And with him will be his call. Are you called? Hmm? Are you called? Has God called you? Huh? Has 
God called you? Yeah. Huh? He's called you? Okay. With him will be his call and chosen and faithful followers. See, he's looking for faithful followers. He's looking for faithful followers. Not hot or cold, not in the middle, gray area of followers. Things are good, I'm gonna follow. I got money in my account, I'm gonna follow. My wife treat me good, I'm gonna follow. My husband treat me good, I'm gonna follow. Now he's not looking for those, he's looking for no matter what we're going through, the storm, the wind, the rain, it's good, bad, ugly, doesn't matter what it is, I'm gonna follow him. Why? Not because I'm faithful, but because he's faithful. He's faithful. That's why I'm gonna follow him. You know, this last night I was getting prepared for a message and I was spending time and you know I always look for a little joke or something to say. And guess what? When you have family and kids, they usually provide those jokes for you. Okay? <laughs> and sometimes you are just the joke, okay? <laughs> in that, okay? So I'm I'm in my room and, and you know door shut and, and I've got my uh, AirPods on and, and I'm listening to uh, just worship music and just just allowing God to just move with me and stuff. I'm having a real intimate time with God. Okay? At least I thought I was by myself. I thought it was just me and the Lord. Okay? But my eyes are closed. Okay? I don't want no distractions. I mean, nothing going on. And and all of a sudden I get this tap on the shoulder. And sure enough, it's one of my kids, it's my oldest daughter. Okay. And she's laughing. Because I'm sitting there, you know, I'm in my chair and I'm just, you know, I'm kind of kind of rock, you know, moving, moving through some beats and stuff, and just you know, just having a good time with the Lord. And my daughter's laughing at me. <laughs> and I look at her and I say, why are you laughing? I'm having an intimate time with the Lord. What are you, what are you doing? She goes, Dad, you, you can't even believe what I was doing. She goes, you were, you had your eyes closed and, and the fan was blowing on you. And I was taking the fan, I was moving it this way and I was moving it that way. And I was moving it this way and that way, you know. And uh, I'm saying your name, hey Dad, hey Dad, hey Dad, you know. And I'm talking to you and stuff and you're, you, you're not even hearing me. She goes, it was so funny. Only problem was is she was the only one thought it was funny. <laughs> Kids, right? Yeah. Kids. Yeah. yeah. So she thinks she has a place to sleep tonight. She doesn't. She <laughs> doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't. It's fun. Life's fun. Huh? Is life fun? Yes. Huh? Is it good? Yes. It should be. It should be. It should be the other thing good. We serve a faithful God. We serve a faithful God. You you should walk in confidence. I mean, I mean, literally, you you kind of walk with a little swag, you know, huh? A little swag, yeah. And 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 because why? Because you serve a faithful God. He's never gonna let you down. Never, never gonna let you down. I don't care what you've done to him yesterday. I don't care if you didn't open the work out. He's never gonna let you down, ever. So you can walk with a little swag. Knowing that you serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And no matter what's going on at your job, oh, you got fired yesterday. Who cares? Why? Because I serve a faithful God and He's in control. We got to stop caring about what the world's doing. And we got to start caring about what God's doing and what He's doing. And He's walking with you and He's faithful. So let's be faithful back to Him. So we go through trials, we go through situations. Guess what? Don't get caught up in the muck. Don't get down. And hey, here's the thing. You will go through trials. You will. Right before Christmas, we had a trial brought right on our front doorstep with another family. And man, it was messy. And we're still dealing with things and stuff. But you know, uh, here's the thing. God's got it. I ain't going to worry about it. God's got it. I just got to be what? I just got to be faithful. I just got to be faithful. See, when I'm not faithful and I take all those things on, then guess what happens? I get weighted down. Yeah. I get weighted down. It's on my conscience. It's on the. It's on my mind. All these things. That's that's garbage. He's got it. He's faithful. Turn with me to Second Timothy two, verse thirteen. You know, in the Greek, uh, faithful is pronounced pistos, and it means trust. Reliable, trustworthy, faithful, and intimate. Intimate. You see, if you're going to have that walk with God, you've got to have an intimate relationship with Him. You've got to have an intimate relationship with Him. It just can't be a surface relationship. 
you got to have an intimate. You got to dive deep with him. You got to. We were talking about this morning during prayer time, and and, and you've got to. You got to go to that place with him. Where it's you're, you're it's you know not twenty four. You're, you're supposed to be in prayer twenty four seven, right? You can call some prayer. It really prayer is this thing. It's just it's just having a, a, a conversation. I can talk to God in my head. I don't need to speak the word. I can be walking on the sidewalk and be talking to God in my spirit. I don't need to just speak the words. So I can be at work and I can be talking, talking to the Lord. I can be in front of a man who's just foul mouth, foul mouth. And guess what? I'll be having a conversation with God. Find that spirit in the name of Jesus. You know, I was talking to my wife the other day, and and see, circumstances and situations um, come all the time, right? We have to be the people that control that by changing the atmosphere by who we are and who we have got to be is faithful. If we're faithful to him, he'll be faithful back and guess what he'll do? He'll intercede in that situation. He'll take over. He's God. He can do that. But you've got to allow him to do that. You see, we want to control. We want to be in control. All right? It feels good to be in control. It feels good to be the boss. Okay? I mean, who really honestly, who doesn't like to be the boss? Uh, even, even young kids, you know, even my young kids like to be the boss. You know, Dad, I'll tell you, show you how to use this gadget, okay? All right? Man, my parents, he's just not that smart. You show them how to use this gadget, you know? They don't say that to me. It's just, you know, they drown the place. Or, you know. <laughs> Second Timothy 2.13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. See, he can't be anything other than faithful. Let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord, and Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful, Father. Father, I thank you that I get to walk with you every single day of my life, and I get to walk with the faithful one. Father, when I'm not faithful, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not being Father, I ask that you would speak to us today. Holy Spirit, I invite you in this room. I invite you to take over this room. I invite you to consume every heart in this room, Lord, so that at the end, Lord, that we would walk away being more faithful to you. Father, we ask that you would guide us and direct us. Give us wisdom in all that we do and say, so that whatever we do glorifies your name. And Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we ask this in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. A lot of times, you know, I talked about this just a minute ago, but we talk about people being faithful in certain areas of our lives, right? You know, my parents are, you know, faithful in the way to, you know, show up at different events and do those type of things, right? Or, but they may not be faithful in other areas, you know, or, or you know, we have a, a business and I got faithful employees that show up all the time. And then I have some faithful employees that are not faithful in that area. They show up late all the time. So they're faithful and showing up late all the time. Okay? <laughs> Which is not good. Right? I'm a big time guy. Okay, I believe the most important asset you have in your life is time. Because time's not guaranteed the next second, right? So you better you better understand time and, and, and how God sees time. It's the most important thing you got on this earth. Right? Now eternity is coming. One day I'm going to eternity. One day. But for here on this earth while I'm here, I'm called to do something. I'm called to be faithful to him. Why am I called to be faithful to him? So that I can make a difference. And here's the thing. I'm not just called to do that. Every single person here is called to do that. We've got to be a faithful people. I, I believe, and you know, people have said it from when I was little, the end times is close. And it's closer than it was when I was a kid. Okay? <laughs> That's truth. Okay? Now, I don't know when it is, and nobody does. But man, I see what's going on in this world, and I'm thinking, man, he's got to be getting ready to come down and, 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 and take charge. Okay? Because there is just a lot of things. I know this. I believe this. I, I've heard a different couple of prophetic words in relation to 2020. I believe there is going to be a major shakeup that, that non believers will notice and will have to recognize. We'll have to recognize there is somebody greater in control. That Jesus is alive and living. But here's the thing. 
here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can't look around and go, who's going to be that person that's going to be that person, that voice for God? Who's going to be that person that's going to be that voice for God? What you need to do is look in the mirror and say, I'm going to be that person that's going to be that voice for God. I'm going to step forward. I'm going to be that faithful one. I'm going to walk in his word. I'm going to walk in his truth. I'm going to walk most importantly in his love. We've got to be faithful people when it comes to God's love. Listen, this world's hurt. This world's hurt. Listen, somebody hurt you is because of hurting. Hurt people hurt people. Don't get caught up in the, the flesh part of it. Oh, they're doing this to me. No, 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 no. No, they're hurting. Right? It's not about you. They're hurting. So love them. Be faithful to God, and he will intercede in those things. Because why? He is what? He's faithful. When? Always. Always. He can't be anything different. He's faithful always. <clears throat> this year for <coughs> my family and I has been a, a really a testimony of God's undeniable faithfulness. Um, some of you know my story, some of you don't, but you know, we went through a period of time where we lost everything. And, and, and the truth is, as a family, we had everything. People would have looked at us and said, man, they have everything. They have God. They have, they have money. They have business. They have uh, friends. They have family. Um, you know, everybody loves them. And we lost everything. You know, the funny thing is, is when you lose everything, you really see who your friends are. And what you realize is you got a lot of acquaintances. Okay? Not, not so much the friend part of it. Okay? That faithful part. Okay? You really see who's faithful. And really what you see is how faithful they are to God. See, because I know this. If my friends are faithful to God, they'll be faithful to me. If they're not faithful to God, guess what? Good chance they're definitely not going to be faithful to you. But yet we set ourselves up for that failure, believing that the friends that we walk with outside of God are going to be faithful to us. And here's the thing. Even people who say they walk with God... All right, we all know we've had some of those. And hey, I've been one of those. I've been one of those. And, and here's the thing. We, we have those friends that say they, they're Christians. My, my, one of my daughters has gotten a real experience of this. She's been in college, goes to Christian college, right? Who knows that with 20,000 people in a Christian college, probably not everybody can be walking with the Lord. Straight and narrow. Okay? All right? We live, in, we live in the real world, right? We live in the real world. And even though we have a lot of people in the church, right, come to church on Sundays, and, and I walk with the Lord and, and those type of things, hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Don't judge, because you were one of them. Don't judge. Just be faithful. Just be faithful to Him. Love them, okay? Love them right where they're at. Love them right where they're at. Why? Because you want Him to be faithful to you, right? Okay? But let's be faithful to others. Just because they make a mistake, just because they sway to the right or sway to the left, let's not throw them under the bus. Let's do what God does. He's faithful to them. When, when they call out his name, he's there. He says, I'm already here. You don't have to look far. I'm right here. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 33. <coughs> I've got a few scriptures that we can kind of read real fast. I'll give you the scripture and then I'm just going to kind of read through so you don't necessarily have to turn to all of them. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Psalms 57.10 For great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Psalms 145, 17, 21. The Lord is righteousness in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. Listen, I'm living proof of this right here. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. I fear the Lord. I, I really honestly don't fear man. I respect men and their positions. 
but, but I fear the Lord. Um, he, he runs the show for me. And so because that, I fear him. Because you talk about being the boss, he is the boss. In my life, he's the boss. And it really, nothing else matters outside of that. I love everybody. I, I want to be your friends. But if that means swaying outside of him being the boss of my life, I guess we can't be friends. And so, man, that's kind of mean. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because if I want that person to get saved, I better stay here. I better stay here. I better stay here. Because at the end times, people are going to be looking. They're going to be going, man, I, I, I see that there's something going on. I want to find that guy that prayed for me. I want to find that guy that's walked that walk. I want to find that guy that's been faithful to God. I want to know what he knows because he walks in security. He ain't worried. He ain't fearful. I see him get fired from a job. And guess what? He just said hallelujah. Because God's got something better. Why? Because he's faithful. It's not because we're faithful. It's because he is faithful. And we've got to walk in that every single day. Walk in that confidence. We had a situation in our business this year where a contract was taken away from us. Unbeknownst to us, people didn't even come and tell us it was taken away from us. And it was a multi-million dollar contract. No. No, not that. Not that. Guess that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've gotten to a place where I know that he's got something better. Good, that took up too much of our time anyhow. God's got something better, more popular. But the only way that he can have that for you is if you're faithful to him. Because see, he already has it. He already has it for you. It's not a question if he has it. He already has it for you. But if you come to that place in your life where you've submitted to him and you're walking in faithfulness to him. You see, because if he already has it for you, but I'm walking over here going, man, God, man, you really did a good one on me now. Man, Lord, you just took this from me. And man, God, I just... You know, I just don't know what I'm going to do. My world's falling apart because, you know, this was taken from me. And, man, God, I guess, man, you know, anybody ever done that before? Huh? You ever done that before? I guess I'm not going to do that. All right. You guys are just way above. Okay? Man, it's nice to be in this room. Man. Just joking. Kind of. <clears throat> Psalms 5710. Oh, I'm sorry, I read that one. Skip over here to Psalms 146.6. He is the maker of the heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. Think about this. He is the maker of the heaven and the earth and sea and everything in them. Let's say it again. He is the maker of the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Do you think, do you think the maker of the heavens, earth, and everything in them and the sea is worried about a little contract? Do you think he's worried about a little contract? I mean, raise your hand. Do you really think he's worried about that? Huh? He ain't worried about that. You know why? He owns all the contracts. He owns all of them. Why is he worried about that? Oh, he says, son, I'm going to take you from here to here. And in order to do that, you can't be here. In order to be here, you can't be here. I got something better for you. But that's a mindset and an attitude that you have to walk in every day. Why? Because he's faithful. I can walk in that mindset and attitude. You know why? Because he's faithful. Not because I am. Because he is. We've got to walk in that place every single day. Listen, listen. If any of you have any troubles going on, if you have any troubles, just raise your hand if you've got things going on. Raise your hands up. And if you don't, you need to have something going on. <laughs> you say, why is that? So he can show his faithfulness. So he can show his faithfulness. I heard a guy say one time, he goes, he goes the only people that I know that can see miracles are people who need miracles. I want to be in a place all the time so I can see a miracle. What does that mean? That means I've got to be out and going and living life, and I've got to be in it. 
I got to be in the battle. Can't sit on the sideline. Sit on the sideline, you're not in the battle. You're in the trenches. If you want to be in the trenches, if you want to see God's faithfulness, be in the trenches. Be in the trenches. Without that, guess what? You just go over here, enjoying yourself. Okay, doing your thing. You know, Satan's not bothering me over here. So things are good because Satan's not bothering me. Let's go, Satan. Bring it on. Let's go. Don't say that. Careful what you wish for. Listen, I know who I serve. I know who wins. I know who wins. And guess what? I've seen things and stuff. I work with a high school, and I get to see a lot of things in high school with kids and stuff. And 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 man, there's you forget if there's a battle, there's a battle, man. There is a battle. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy whoever he sees. And he's after him right now. He's after you right now. If you're seeking the Lord, he's after you. Man, every time I preach, it just seems like Satan just really wants to try to get me and destroy me. But I would tell you, all he does when he does that, man, just hypes me up. It just gets me more excited. It gets me more excited about what God's doing and God's faithfulness. He's big. Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Do you know how you know why he can do that? Because he's faithful. He's faithful. If you're burdened in here, if you're weary, if you've got things going on in life and they take you to that place, and I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. And God's been there too with me. Every single time he's been there with me. Doesn't matter what I was going through. Why? Because he is who he is. He's faithful. He's faithful in all things. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you got financial troubles, he's faithful. If you got marital problems, he's faithful. If you got situations in your life, he's faithful. If you allow him to be. We are so good at taking on those things and say, don't worry, I got it. I'm in control. I'm not going to tell anybody about it because I'm in control. I got it. I got the situation. You want him to be faithful, man? Listen. When we lost our contract, it's like we picked up way more work after that. And we've been busy ever since, every single day. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why? Because he's faithful. I just serve a faithful God. Can I just serve a faithful God? Yeah, why? Because he's faithful. You go, man, this guy says faithful a lot. You know why? Because when you leave here, I want you to understand who you serve. I want you to understand who you serve. Not a matter of is he that or not. No, no, you've got to understand who you serve. You've got to understand who you serve. The problem with most Christians today is they don't know who God is. They don't know him. Why? Because they don't have intimacy with him. They don't walk in that way. Okay, they want to walk in that surface area. I'm going to tell you something, that's a gray area. That's a gray area. And a lot of Christians walk in, hey, I've done it before. Things are going good. Hey, you know, I don't need God in my prayer now. Until God gives, God take us away. And then he shows you who's boss. Right. Okay? He says, I'm boss. All right? But I'm glad he's boss. I'm glad he's boss. Deuteronomy 7 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is a faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. I'll read it again. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. You gotta know he's God. You gotta know he's God. And you gotta walk in that. Here's here's the thing. Listen. Young people, like if you're 30 or less, you may go through a period of time where you just feel, you know, I'm going to do my thing. Anybody ever just thought, I'm going to do my thing? Uh, yeah, I've been there. And two others have been here too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll talk to those two others that have been there, okay? <laughs> no, listen, we've been to that place where we, I'm going to just do my thing, okay? No, I'm going to, you know, easy. You know, I got a job, make a little money. You know, all these little things. Okay? Listen. A lot of times God reaches out to somebody who's deep in a hole and is reaching back up. 
But I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to be in that whole thing. You don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. If you want, if you challenge yourself and you stretch yourself, you take a rubber band, right? You just put a rubber band up here. You don't know what it can actually cover until you stretch it. So you really don't know what God is going to use you for until you begin to stretch. So just staying like a rubber band and just sitting up here, okay, it's going to only cover so much. And usually that's so much is something too small. Young people, you want to be stretched early. Don't be satisfied with average. Being an average Christian. I go to church. I'm good. You know, I pray before my meal. I'm good. We think that's being a faithful Christian. That's not just being, that's, that's just going through the motions of a Christian. But that's a very gray area. And a lot of times the gray area takes us to the place of going to the hole. We don't have to go there. Young people, you don't have to go there. Now, if you're in a place right now in your life where you're kind of going through the motions of being a Christian, you don't have to be there. You can walk in calmness. You serve a faithful God. You can walk as a faithful Christian, but you got to begin to stretch. You cannot stay the same. Staying the same is one step closer to death. If you're a business in this day and age, and you don't change, well, I'm a business. I'm not going to use technology. I refuse to use it. It's paper, pencil, you know, I'm just going to stay there. How long do you think that business is going to stay in business? It's not going to be. It's going to die. As a Christian, it's the exact same thing. If you're not willing to change and grow and be like a rubber band to stretch yourself, you're one step closer to death. Who wants to live life like that when you don't have to? I don't care what you see on the news. I don't care what you see. If you, know, you see people, fame, and fortune, all this stuff. Listen, listen. Without Jesus, they're dead. Without Jesus, they're dead. And there's nothing wrong to have this. There's nothing wrong. Without Jesus, you're dead. You're not, you're not alive. Listen, it's time for Christians to walk and be faithful Christians and start bringing life into this world. Let us be the life. Let us be that life. Let us speak life. And how do we do that? If we're faithful to him, we don't have to question if he's faithful in the situation. He's always there. He's always there. Get back to Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. Gonna have a time for prayer in just a little bit. And I don't know where you're at in your life. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know where you're at. But God does. That's all. That's all about. And He knows. But more importantly, do you know where you're at in your life? Do you know where you're at in your life? Are you playing the game? Are you going through the motions? Huh? Or are you stretching yourself? And when you're stretching yourself, a lot of times you may have a question of direction. God, which direction do I need to go? You need to be tapped in. You need to have that intimate relationship with him. So he can direct you and guide you. You make the path straight. But at the end, I'm going to bring up some people and they're going to pray for you. And really, it's, it's for this. Do you know? Do you know where you're at in your walk? And if you really don't know where you're at in your walk, then I want you to come forward and just get prayed for you. Just ask for wisdom, guidance, direction. Take that next step into that intimacy. Open up your word of God. Turn up on the worship music. Man, I'll, to, I'll, just, I'll just sit a lot of times before I, I preach, and I just I just let worship music just soak in. I just let it soak in. Because I want to be at that spot, at that place with God. I don't want there to be anything of me involved with what I'm doing. Even if your daughter's in the fan back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation 17, 14. They will wage war against the Lamb. <clears throat> Listen, there's a war going on. All we have to do is turn on the news and see that. But the Lamb will triumph over them. You will win. If you 
not been your way. No question. Don't have to worry about it. Don't have to worry about it. The Word of God says, do not worry, right? right. Don't have to worry about what you're going to eat tomorrow. All right? Don't have to worry about your job. You don't have to worry about any of those things. You don't have to worry about culture. You don't worry about any of that stuff. But the Lamb will triumph over them because He is. He is. Lord of Lords and King of Kings. The question is, is have you made him Lord and King over your life? And with him will be his call. Are you called? Yes, you're called. Chosen? Yes, you're chosen. And the faithful followers. My question to you is, do you want to be more faithful than what you've been? I know I do. As I was putting together this message and, and just reading this word, you know, it's never the, the, the student that learns the most. It's always the, the teacher that really learns the most. Because you're reading this and you're reading it over and over again. You're looking through scripture and you're looking at different things and, and God's speaking to you and stuff. And I know for me, God's been extremely faithful to me this year. But next year, I got to ramp it up. I got to ramp it up. I got to be more faithful. And just little things. It's never usually big things, it's usually little things that get us. So my question to you about your heads or drugs. My question to you this morning is, do you want to be a rubber band and stretch yourself? Just slip up your hand if you want to be a rubber band and stretch yourself. If you want to be somebody who steps up your faithfulness to God in whatever area. Whatever area that is. Whatever area that is. Put that down. The next question is that maybe you don't know God. Maybe you've never asked this faithful God to step into your life and take over. And if that's this, if that's you this morning, I want you just to slip up your hand. Thank you. I can see that. So I'm going to say a prayer, and I'll just say it with me for that person who raised their hand and wants to know God and wants to know that faithful God. Just repeat this prayer after me. Father, I thank you for being you. Father, I thank you for being faithful. Lord, I ask you to come into my life. And I ask you to be Lord of my life. Lord, I confess with my mouth that you are God. And I believe that you sent your son to die on the cross for me. So, Lord, I ask you to come in and be Lord. I submit my life to you today. And, Lord, I ask that you would give me wisdom on how to walk and how to move with you. Lord, I thank you and praise you and ask this in your mighty name. Amen. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. All of the heavens are rejoicing right now. So let's rejoice. So if you raised your hand for that one, for that, that person that wants to, to, to step up and be a little more faithful, I want you to just go ahead and step to your feet. Listen, nothing to be embarrassed of. I'm standing already. Alright? I'm standing already. I want to be stretched this next year. I don't know about you, but I want to be stretched this next year. Why? Because I serve a faithful God and He's always been faithful to me. How could I not want to be more faithful? All right? And if you don't stand, it's no big deal. All right? there's, there's no judgment there. That's between you and him. Okay, That's between you and him. And trust me, God has a way of doing with people. Out of love. He does it out of love. He does it out of love. So I'm going to ask, I'm gonna ask uh, the two couples I asked to pray just come up here and kind of spread out. Uh, Rusty, Mickey, my dad, my mom. These are friends of mine I've known for many, many years. And uh, they're a power couple. My mom and dad, I've actually known them for 45 years. <laughs> <laughs> and they're a power couple too. And uh, they, they both love the Lord. And they've both gone through trials and tribulations and stuff. But here's the thing, they're still standing. Yeah. They're still standing. You know why? Because they know they're still standing. <laughs> so I'm just going to 
Great. I'm just going to uh, put on some music, and, uh, and we're just going to go and take our time of prayer.